man, that hurt. Oh, but I think it cured my schizophrenia. Real, real, real. Once more, you've come on my show, and you're here, and I'm there, but we're on Zoom. Hello, Stu Block, round two. I'm sorry, I was still taking in the beautiful vocals. It was, it was echoing in my head. That well, vocal. that means a lot coming from you there. I, Welcome to Metal Health. I got, I got shit bumps. Oh, wow, really? Yeah. Right I don't believe you, but um, I'll take your word on it anyways. <laughs> beautiful. Beautiful. Awesome. Well, I'm happy to have you back. Last mm -hmm. time, the first time, we kind of got cut out because of some internet connections and things like that, and I had more to ask you. Yeah. I mean, you'd think they would have improved that thing called the internet and even the connections to it. But Well, you know, it could have been the program because I was using a bunch of different programs to try to do it live, even though I technology. knew I didn't have a following, which was kind of yeah. stupid. But um, we're doing it different, and we're doing it better. Oh yeah! yeah. Well, look good, man. You well, got you got a lot of uh, you got a lot of swag behind you. Well, first of all, I was gonna say this. I was gonna say uh, this is not, and I repeat, this is not a permanent shrine to you and your work. I well, changed the background for every interview, and don't feel that special. I won't. I won't. I never do. I never do. There is at one point in, in every time I do talk to you, you do know how to make me feel this big. So. <laughs> well, that's just because uh, we're human, right? Yeah. yeah. And it's, it's a good thing, man. You need those types of people around you, don't you think? <laughs> yeah, I got pop, like really Bring sharp people that just pop the, pop the ego bubble every now and then. You need them. You yeah. need them around you. You do. It's a the good first thing. time I met you, you signed this thing up here. I did. I did. Yeah. yeah. I was wearing my, uh, my fuck cancer into eternity shirt and I right. showed you my shitty into eternity tattoo. <laughs> hey man, it's not shitty. It's you, man. No worries. Dude. That's cool, man. And I remember those shirts, the, the fuck cancer shirts, man. That was, uh, that was pretty cool. And I remember I hadn't seen, like, I see a lot more bands or people, you know, putting out those types of shirt, the fuck cancer or whatever. But I was actually the other day and well, that, I was thinking about, uh, I hadn't seen that around really before we had done it very much. You know what I mean? I hadn't seen it around. So it was kind of cool being kind of maybe one of the first bands to just kind of put that shirt out there in the metal scene. And it was uh, that phrase or whatever. So it's kind of cool. Yeah. Not only is that cool, but now it's been overdone so much. Um, yeah. <laughs> my, uh, my friend Kyle Lucy, who's a comedian, has a joke about how like, um, how, uh, how, how just how stupid that is. Oh, fuck cancer. You you know? you're, you're being so edgy with the one thing no one would care if you said fuck to. You know? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Time's come I and gone. But, uh, that but... joke, but it's okay because I'm not trying to steal it. So we're good. Huh? <laughs> All good. Awesome. All right. Um, yeah, so as I said, I'm going to start with some questions that will uh, continue from the last time. All right. Um, uh, as for singing style, as like as that goes, what's more difficult to pull off? Going from clean vocals to death metal vocals, or uh, like like in, into eternity days, or uh, power metal vocals like Iced Earth? Man, that's actually a really good question. Um, both, obviously, obviously, both have their challenges. There are certain ranges in my voice that are easier, and there are certain ranges in my voice that are more challenging. I think definitely with Into Eternity, doing transitioning, being able to transition from a, a full-on guttural death vocal into a beautiful clean singing chorus, it, I, would, I felt like was is, is definitely more challenging for sure. Um, but again, in, in Iced Earth, uh, there are ranges in, in Iced Earth that I'm, I do find challenging as well, almost like as much of a headache as doing hybrid vocals kind of thing. So there are on both sides challenges, but I would say for like pound for pound, night after night, like if I'm going to do this every night, which one is the most challenging? And especially if you're doing full, 
you know, hour and a half, two hour, two and a half hour sets, depending on how big of a band you are. If I was doing hybrid vocals, death vocals and clean vocals, um, you know, on a full, full, I would find that far more challenging for sure. It is, it, it just is, you know, cause you're, it's two mindsets. It's two, you know, depending on how you write the song, you could go from a death, you know, raging death vocals into a beautiful melodic moment. So one minute you're tapping into this pure rage and then, so it's not only just a throat thing, <clears throat> it's a psychological thing too. So it kind of hits all around in, in, in every way. So I don't uh, even have you, to be singing for my head to be like that. <laughs> right. Exactly. But you know, it's uh it's, it's something that that transition from the death vocals, that pure rage to the, to the cleans where you, depending on what kind of clean you're doing and how emotional and what type of delivery you're trying to give off uh, definitely is quite challenging. It's quite challenging, but I miss it. You know, Robbie, I miss it, man. I do. I, I, mi I miss it uh, immensely. Um, and I think it's, uh, it's not something that I would ever put out of the question of doing in the future. Uh, something along those lines, doing uh, some hybrid vocals, some extreme death to cleans and uh, doing some tasty stuff. But uh, life is, is it, there's so much ahead of us and there's so much stuff I want to do. And there's still stuff that, you know, that obviously need to be done first before I do any of that. So, um, but uh, it's definitely something that I miss, man. And I, I definitely want to do it again. And I do miss, like, I do miss, just ripping death vocals for sure. Like it's, it's part of me, man. It's part of me. It's part of what I, what I uh, came up doing. So I can't ever toss that aside and, and, uh, and say, no, uh, that was just a phase in my life. You know, that kind of shit. That's bullshit. You know, I, it's, I love it. I, I've always have. And I love, I've always loved the challenge of it too. Right. The challenge. And there's so many different things you can do with the death vocal. And uh, the challenge of being able to transition to to clean different styles of clean vocals. So not even just ultra clean, but some clean with grit and just different pitches and vocals and octaves and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, long story short, it is yeah, it, I I found it a little bit more challenging for sure. Okay, awesome. I'm I'm really glad I asked that question. Yeah. All right. Um, number two. Um, uh, you've been all around the world with Iced Earth. Um, how many countries have you been to and have you been to any countries that don't exist? Like, have you been to Lorazepam? Right. No. Um, I may have been to some countries that did exist, but now don't exist <laughs> because the world is fucking going crazy. But uh, so, but yeah, so um, no, uh, I, how many have I been to? Robbie, come on, man. Why you put me on the spot like this? this is oh, I should have given you this question before so you could have done some math. A lot, man. A <laughs> lot. Um, I have been... We, we have been to, I would say, almost everywhere in Europe. Almost everywhere in Europe. And then, and then we've hit up places like New Zealand. We've hit up places like Australia. We've hit up places like... I've been to, play, I've been to Japan, but I went with Into Eternity. Um... I've been to China with Into Eternity and I've been to China with, uh, with Iced Earth. Um, so been, been blessed, man, to be able to go to a lot of different places. Um, of course, America, um, Canada, and then, and then South America. So a lot of different places in South America. So I can't give you a number, man, off the top of my head, but a shit ton. That's awesome. Like you've yeah. been to every continent, at least, you know. Uh, almost, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I have. Well, yeah. I think you get, should uh, talk to John about doing uh, Antarctica. You know? Well, we, it's funny we joke about that. It's like, well, let's hit everywhere up, but we got to hit those fucking shit. Those those ones that are going to be like, let's go to Antarctica. Let's go to the let's go to the tundra. <laughs> yeah, 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 that too. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> you know, do a couple shows and none of it. You know. Yeah. Well, yeah. someone's got to. You know. Got to do. And it. it's called iced earth. So it's all you got to hit the cold shit. climates, more cold climates, right? Yeah. No, the band will kill me. No, <laughs> they'll be like, Stu, zip it. All right. Well, um, all right. So we all remember this album by, uh, by Iced Earth, uh, by when Tim Ripper Owens was on there. Oh my God. You know yep. what I'm talking about? Like, uh, the, the Civil War and all that. And, yep. um, uh, I've noticed that like uh, Ice Earth hasn't done like a lot of like huge concept albums in a while. Um, so I want you to ask John 
if we can do, if not we, but like you guys can uh, do an album all about Canada in World War One, because that's when like Canada became like Canada, right? Well, like, yeah, yeah. Um, like, I, I, I've got a huge thing that I'm going to read here and hopefully I can make it smooth. Okay. And uh, yeah, because I, uh, yeah, all right. Because okay. like, uh, like in World War One, uh, I mean, between uh, Vimy Ridge and when we stopped, um, when, when we broke through the lines there, when no one expected us to, because we were supposed to be a distraction while the allies attacked uh, the Germans at a different spot. Um, yeah. And, um, uh, and then like in the, the woods of Ypres, well, yeah. Yep. Uh, when uh, when the Germans were using uh, like the poison gas on uh, on everyone, and I know. the Canadian doctors, um, they were the only ones that realized, hey, it's uh, heavier than air, so it's chlorine form based, you know, and uh, that's why it was going into the trenches and killing everyone like that. And if you if uh, if you know it's chlorine based, then you need uh, ammonia to uh, neutralize it. And yep. like, like, honestly, um, there was six kilometers that uh, the Canadians and Australians had to cover because mm -hmm. um, John's country ran, um, Luke's country <laughs> ran. <laughs> so, so it was just like, it was the Canadians and all the Australians, you know? Wow, like, shots fired, Robbie. I shots know, right? Fired, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so like, so uh, the Canadian doctors knew we had to neutralize it with uh, ammonia. Where do we get ammonia? Right. right. So we pissed on some rags, put it over our face, and went well, we and did. some Germans, right? You could be all like singing high about piss rags. That would be awesome. Piss rags on the mouth. And, me, and uh, we could just, yeah, it really translates into the masks and everything. Piss masks. We could yeah, just. Right. Like, <laughs> but no, actually, you're touching on some really cool stuff, but there is some awesome um, Canadian war history that can be touched on. War of 1812, the war between uh, Wolf and Montcalm. <laughs> Uh, you know, Louis Riel, all these, all these different things can be touched on. Um, definitely. It would, that would be absolutely super cool. I know where yeah, you're going but... with it <clears throat> and I'd like to, and like I said, you know, John's super cool in the way that he would be like, well, if I present him something that is awesome, you know what I mean? That he's like, okay, well, that's a really cool concept. And let's, and if he, if I give him some decent lyrics and he's like, well, I can do something with this, then, then, you know, it, usually hits the table man and we we start we start rocking and rolling on it and he's very open to that kind of stuff but he's also you know he's like well if it sucks he, he might be like well dude go revisit it and let's let's think about it he's not you know he never he never tosses anything out but he always encourages us to keep creating and keep um keep doing because there's so many different subject matter no matter what country right there's so yeah. many different <clears throat> wars and uh different subject matters that we can touch on well, it's just that uh, World War One was so important to Canada because you know, um, absolutely, it, it's it's what got us out of like the um, the um, Luke's monarchy and got him out of uh, Luke's finger grasp. You know, I know our independent country. You know, <laughs> Luke. I know he's the like the youngest guy in the band, and he's <laughs> like, <laughs> I know, and he's, you know what? Luke is the most timid. Like he's, he's a large UK gentleman. He comes lumbering in and he's very, you know, he's this large, but he's like this big teddy bear. But um, <laughs> he would be in the court. Like if we, he heard us talking, he would be in the corner like, what? <laughs> He'd just be like, I, what did I do? <laughs> nah, he's, he's great. Awesome. Yeah, uh, Luke is great. I already did his interview and it's going to be after this one because um, you are the first interview uh, with the super awesome intro where uh i hit hey. my head in the straight jacket all right yeah I'm, I'm very i'm really you know looking forward to this <laughs> it's gonna be good yeah I'm, I'm i'm excited you know this Great. is like I, I consider this almost like season two because like the first part i was just getting my legs with the interviews and getting my actual personality and getting like so I was comfortable and like if you were to compare already the last one to this one it's it's like night and day Absolutely. Mental health season two, but it's not Freddy's, but not Freddy's revenge, but Stu's revenge. Oh yeah. I'm calling it round two. Ding, round. ding. <laughs> All right. Uh, ding. Uh, let's talk about ding. something not metal. Um, let's talk about um, the Alley Cat duo. 
Oh, wow. Yes, definitely. My wife and I are doing a, um, a duo. It's, it's something fun that we've always wanted to do. We've been together for a very long time uh, and we've always talked about it, but just our schedules never lined up and with everything going on and we were rehearsing some fun stuff and uh, things kind of started opening up again and we got offered a gig and we did it and it really, we, it, you know, it just really went over well. Robbie, it went over really well. There's a lot of magic we were doing. And then we really, it's, uh, we, we do everything from 60s to 90s duos and uh, uh, duo classics. And um, we do a bunch of uh, single stuff. And she, does, she, plays, um, she plays the piano amazingly. And she plays um, the synthesizer and everything she does. She's just an amazing oh, musician all, too. all oh, the way. Oh, yeah, she'll be awesome play. is if we can get you singing Everybody dance now. Yeah, that would be, we could do that one. <laughs> but I gotta be, I gotta be like, we, gotta have the right light. We, would have, we would have to have the right lighting. So. Yeah, 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 that's true. We'll, we'll um, save it for the stage there, Stu. <laughs> absolutely. But yeah, no, we're doing a duo and we're just having fun together. And uh, I'm tapping in on a new, a new voice. Um, not a new voice, but I've always had, had it, but I'm, I'm able, it, it's a challenge for like, it, it's, it's, it helps me keep my chops up as well. And it's, and it's also challenging to do uh, some of these covers as well. Um, and it's, and it challenges me to find different ways of approaching these songs and, and putting my own stamp on it. You know, yeah, I'm yeah. not trying to be, I'm not, when we do, when I, when, when I approach a cover, I try to approach it in the way that, how would I do it? Not like I, I keep true to the artist, of course, but how would I do it? You know what I mean? I'm not changing melodies and cadences or anything like that, but definitely try to throw my own signature on there. And, and I've, and I've felt like I've tapped into this really cool blues rock, uh, whiskey tenor voice, which is kind of nice. And, and, uh, it is a little bit more of a commercial voice, um, as it were, but, uh, I, I really enjoy doing it and it's something fun and it challenges me and it's, um, overall, the, the, the best thing is, is that I get to do it with my, with my amazing wife, because I don't, I have not get to gotten to be with her for a lot of, a lot of our years together. I've had to be on tour and all these kinds of things. And I've been always kind of away. And now it's a, it's been a great opportunity the last um, few years to be able to, um, you know, really plan for that kind of stuff. And, and we, we work very well together. We harmonize well together. She's an amazing musician and, and she's an amazing singer. And why wouldn't we do something together? Right. Cause we're going to be growing old together anyway. So I would much rather, and eventually be playing a dirty lounge with her <laughs> somewhere, you know, yeah, what that's, I mean? that's, that's amazing. doing something, you know, having a, having a fun time and, and uh, just expressing our, ourselves and our, our love for each other through music. And I think what we do with Alley Cats is, obviously something totally different than what I do with metal or what she does with her other bands and all that kind of stuff. So um, it's just something that we, we, we don't, we just have a fun time. We, man, the, I think our last gig halfway through it, we had pretty much the whole, like we had the whole place in stitches laughing because we were poking fun at each other. We're doing fart jokes and oh my God, it was just, we were getting into all sorts of fun stuff. So, but we're, re we're just trying to be real and we're just, whatever comes to our head. And it's just, it's like if we were on our couch at home, <laughs> you know what I mean? But we're just playing. So it's uh, something that, uh, yeah, we're super enjoying that we're doing and we're always, I think we got a good 50 songs down now. Um, so we're working on another 40 songs, roughly 30 or 40 songs. Um, we don't know how things are going to go. We're not booking too much because we're, <clears throat> there's not a lot of places to play because it's very difficult and a lot of, a lot of protocols and every, and the rules are changing all the time. So uh, that all, all that aside, um, we're just working on our craft. We're, we're just taking the odd gig here and there. Um, we do have a, a, a small, um, Christmas gig that we're going to be doing in December uh, that maybe I really, I'd like to live stream perhaps. Uh, so we'll see, we'll see what happens there. But um, anyway, that's Alley Cats. It, it'll be um, just super awesome, super happy to do it with uh, my wife and it's uh, challenging me and challenging me vocally. And I get to wear a fancy vest and dress <laughs> pants. And yeah. yeah. I, was thinking, <laughs> uh, I was thinking, you know, to get that big, you guys could do videos where you dress up like homeless people on well, the corner. 
And then we really are alley cats. Absolutely. No. And we were, I was actually talking to her about that. I'm like, that, that would be a cool spin. You know what I mean? We walk in and, you know, we would, we would just be, I don't know. Yeah. Like homeless cats, <laughs> but our, but our back the, and, and we could totally do cool stuff like that, you know, even special stuff, but regardless, it's just fun doing it. But we have a cool little background that we got made up and it's an, it's a brick wall with our, with our logo on it. And it's uh, it fits just a little small little, you know, duo stage. And it's, we, we set up this really, we bring kind of like this ambience too. We have two tables on the side with some soft lamps and, you know, just, it's super chill, man. It's super chill. And yeah, so that's that. Yeah. Uh, it's great. Um, I saw. Thanks for asking video. anyway. Thanks for asking about it. Man. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. It's, it's what you're doing right now. So yeah. Um, I uh, saw the video that Tim Roth um, posted of it. And like, all I could think to myself was like, wow, you know, I don't think there is a song in the world that wouldn't sound better with Stu Block singing. Well, I, that's very sweet of you. That's very sweet. I'm kind of biased. (laughs) (laughs) But I would beg to differ, but thank you, brother. Thank you very much. (laughs) I'm just, I'm having fun, man. I'm just having fun. That's great, because uh, that's all what anyone needs singing, to do right now. Again. Singing I wasn't well. singing for a while, Robbie. I wasn't singing for a while. I was, I was a little bit of a dark time as well. Like I had a, um, There was a time, uh, a couple of years, where I just didn't want to sing at all. Didn't want to sing at all. We, what, we what years were these? What's that? What, uh, what, what years? Uh, it was, uh, I would say, 2000. 2016, 17, I would say almost three years, we're out two and a half years between halfway through 16, um, you know, but 17, 18, you know, definitely 17, 18, this, this year, uh, 17, 18, even 19, man, like I would say 17, 18, 19, 16 was all, was all good, but. So what um, you're saying, Stu, is when. For a while there, I just didn't, I didn't want to, I didn't, I just, I don't know. I just, um. It was when we got off the road and we just stopped touring and I was just kind of finding my own way for, for a while. I think it definitely between 17 and 19, the last three years. I, uh, but now I'm feeling it again, man. I'm feeling it again. And I'm, I'm back. I, I feel like I'm back. I'm, I'm going to be uh, putting a little, a little studio, a vocal thing in, in the house here. And uh, Christina knows how to record and stuff like that. So we've got a little bit of the equipment. So we want to just kind of, I start I want to start recording my voice and start doing some vocal videos maybe and just throwing them up there and just letting it out you know what I mean doing some different things and maybe doing some collaborations some fun stuff that's it you know um but that's all in the future we'll see what we'll see what happens just I want to I want to get back doing a bunch of multi-genre of stuff man you know just uh, it'll be fun it'll be fun so yeah um that, that, that would sound great like, I always had this idea, like, I couldn't do it myself, but um, it's uh, taking metal and uh, infusing it with, like, 70s soul music. Cool, man. Cool. Yeah, right? I, know. I mean, and even that, you know that uh, you take take metal, and I do love that 70s soul, and I love, remember the old, those old artists, and I can't say, like, even the beat, that Bee Gees kind of stuff, you know what I oh, mean? Oh, yeah. Man, imagine, like, uh, imagine that, a, high, that high falsetto that sexy high falsetto though that makes you just woo you know what i mean that's baby maker stuff right there yeah like but, we, uh, um, take the song tragedy but make that metal absolutely yeah absolutely so, or like yeah, even like no. really cool funky stuff like um like some of bobby womack stuff and making that metal yeah did you know bobby womack i have i've heard of bobby yep well yep. I, I like out of after metal it goes like for me it goes like bobby womack that's the next, next wow time. nice yeah. man nice nice i've got like um, nine of his records so yeah i'm uh yeah definitely like uh freddie for me i've been listening to some freddie hubbard and i've been listening to uh some um a lot of some a lot of george thorogood and some Bee Gees. i've been listening to a lot of old stuff lately a lot a lot of stuff we but we have a we bought a record player man and so then i went on this whole tangent of buying as much vinyl as i could so i went went, okay let's just go from the 50s to now and i went i just bought a i went and got a bunch of stuff in the last few years and just been kind of every time i'm feeling like nostalgic i want to just put on a bunch of old stuff um george benson stuff like that you know some old some old cats that 
just had a bunch of soul, man. Yeah. I, I, when I sent you that, uh, that joke, that's actually my favorite joke of uh, 2019. That was like the first time you like responded right away after reading it. So that was cool. Oh, cool, man. Right on. <laughs> you remember that one. I'm not going to yeah. say it again because I've said it on many of these things. So, <laughs> um, yeah, but yeah, there's that. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, uh, is there anything you want to uh, promote or plug before we get going here, Stu? Um, not really, man. There's not much going on. Like, like I said, I'm just, um, I'm doing my thing and, uh, uh, one little, well, I guess one little thing is I will be doing, um, I'll be launching, um, a t-shirt soon. Uh, so I'll be going to be doing some merch. Uh, so, uh, just something nice and fun. I want to pair. It's going to have a cat on it. Absolutely. Yes. I knew it. (laughs) Absolutely. Uh, so I'm going to be launching, um, my own little, a, a little, it might be a, a print on demand store. I don't know. It might even be my own web website. I haven't decided yet uh, what avenue to take, but um, it's in the works. I have a lot of artwork already ready to, to release uh, over the past few years. I've been just collaborating with a few artists and stuff like that. So I already have everything ready to release. I've just been looking for the right platform and the right time to do it. Um, I was going to do it before COVID hit, but then COVID hit and I, I just kind of, and it was a good thing because uh, I needed to renegotiate, re- not renegotiate, but re, re- um, uh, figure out what uh, platform I want to do these releases on. So, uh, so a lot of cool things uh, that I want to, that I, a lot of cool ideas that I want to be doing. Uh, so I'll be doing a t-shirt that's going to be pairing with um, some animal rescues. So we'll be trying to raise money for some animal rescues and I'll be releasing some, um, uh, uh, rolling papers, a rolling tray, and a grinder. Uh, I, I, I can't yeah. care about that anymore. Like I know, years ago, I know. I love that. And hey, I know, I know. But you're on the clean. You're on the. You're I'm, high on, I'm life, on a better man. path than I was when I was on. Absolutely, life. you're high on life, man. You're on a whole different level, brother. Yeah. Um, but I do have a lot of people, and I'm, of course, I'm a I'm an I'm a connoisseur and an enthusiast. So, um, <clears throat> so I'm going to do something related to that industry as well. Uh, and uh, a couple more t-shirts I have like, so there'll be like two or three t-shirts that I'm going to be releasing. And then uh, a couple of other accessories and stuff. I'm going to be doing patches, pins and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, so yeah, we'll be doing a bunch of cool, fun artwork and uh, some cool, fun images and some cool, fun products that uh, you'll be able to get your hands on. Uh, haven't figured out when I'm going to be releasing it, but we'll be coming within the next few months here. So that's pretty much the only plug I would want to do as far as what's going on with me as far well, you as you just did it. You, you just did it. Well, that's the only one. So, uh, yeah. Awesome. Um, I don't even, I, I didn't even mention I'm wearing the VIP pass from 2018. So you are in, you are in. You Not are going in. anywhere, but wherever I go. <laughs> yeah, man. I don't know. It's, it's crazy. Yeah. But, uh, all right. Well, thank you very much for being on Metal Health. All right, man. Stu Block, round two. Right on, brother. This is the perfect analogy for mental health. All right. Boom. I fall. And then, like, the jogger comes up. Oh, oh, that happened. That happened right in front of me. Do I have to care? Looks around. Looks around. Do I have to care? Oh, there's no one around. Okay, I'll just keep going. <laughs>